Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sylvia Samorek. I represent a marketing department from PGS Software and today together with uh, Witold Ergietowski, our business analyst, uh, we will give you an edu educational video about uh, RPA, so Robotic Process Automation 2.0, about appropriateness of automated processes. Uh, Witold, I will call him Vitek, uh, it's shorter form of his name, uh, is our business analyst who is a consultant um, in automating of processes uh, in PGS software. In the description of this video, you can find a link to our article about what processes can you automate and what benefits you get from automating your processes uh, in your organization. Uh, Vitek, could you tell me more about ethical dilemma that is um, around this topic? Because we sometimes hear that um, automating human work might cause them losing their job. What do you think about that? Uh, business process automation does not always or necessarily equals layoffs uh, through FG reduction. Um, it can be perceived this way. Um, and people often think about and tell us about what could happen, what will happen with, with me, with my work, uh, when the process I'm currently handling will be automated. You can say that re replacing humans with robots um, allows to, to focus more on processes themselves to uh, optimize them, to uh, focus on uh, how to simplify them. And um, a great benefit uh, is also that people can more focus on uh, um, their professional development in, in, in a way that they may start thinking more about more creative tasks, mm -hmm. uh, not to uh, spend time on boring, repetitive tasks. Uh, at the same time, um, RPA-related uh, roles like business and system analysts, developers and SMEs, when they are engaged in RPA uh, automation, they can focus on not what to do within a process, but how to do within a process, uh, which gives also a good perspective for all kind of improvements so they can focus more on how to improve improve the organization how to improve the process uh, and it's not necessarily connected with uh, with the layoffs uh. yeah that sounds great and this is actually how i also see that the question is if uh, every process can be automated mm, generally speaking no uh, at least not at this time being so of course when thinking about rpa uh, you can say RPA involves and becomes more and more capable of handling uh, more and more complex tasks, demanding tasks, um, till now reserved only for people, for humans. Uh, for example, uh, natural language processing, um, picture recognition, some activities around that can be implemented by, for example, artificial intelligence solutions can be combined with RPA, but not each um, back office, for example, process can be easily automated. So you can't say you can automate everything. There are better and, and, and worse um, examples. It depends on your organization infrastructure solutions and the ability for IT and the business to cooperate. Uh, because RPA um, automation are projects that are not focused on IT or uh, on business solely. With IT and business must cooperate. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to remember that both domains are equally important in this uh, in this journey. It also can depend on uh, what we want to achieve by automating uh, the process so we can speed up, we can avoid mistakes, um, and how much we want to invest and how much time we want to devote for the automation. So again, uh, we have a question of um, how benefit the automated uh, process can be um, comparing to the same process that is manually handled.
does it always is like when you want to um, automate any process that this process is fully ready to be automated or sometimes you have to redesign it or maybe review that? Reviewing the process before we um, decide to automate the process is a very important part of this mm -hmm. um, activity. Uh, as I said, not all processes are equally well prepared or suitable for automation, you may say. So when you say appropriate, you mean any specific criteria that uh, the process should meet to be appropriate? When you think about the suitability or uh, the appropriateness uh, for the process that can be or could be automated, uh, we need to think um, about an exercise of how to label them with the numbers to be able to compare them. Okay, and do you have any pattern to do that? Because I assume, of course, every situation is different, but do we have any structure that can help us with justifying that? Do you have something to, that helps you? Uh, yes, uh, I have prepared an, a simple example because mm -hmm. we would like to give you just an overview um, of how to handle this kind of uh, activity, not necessarily in every case, this will work in a way that will be presented. Each organization need to, needs to think about their own metrics. Mm -hmm. um, when you think about um, the process candidates, uh, yes, you can just simply use Excel. I will show you the screen now. You can think about the suitability for the process in two aspects, how suitable they are, how appropriate it is actually to automate them and what is possible uh, benefit from automating them. It means that when you can see um, here we have three examples and mm -hmm. we have some numbers that, that I will uh, we, we will try to, to show. Um, the simplest process, so the, the, the more simple process is a better uh, candidate. Mm -hmm the more data you have to process, mm -hmm. the better, and uh, the more stable uh, your environment is, actually. So small number of exceptions, for example, you can, uh, you, you can experience that these uh, are better uh, candidates. So when you have uh, uh, these metrics and you, um, let's say, in in the scale from one to five, you can describe of how, how simple a uh, process is. Um, and uh, then you have, a, let's say, a, a value of suitability. And so here, this is just an average. It, again, each and mm -hmm. every uh, organization need to think about how they can be or, or should be in, in, in their context um, calculated. Uh, this is just an example again. So if you find a very simple, uh, very simple case, like, um, for example, simplicity is high, volume is relatively high, mm -hmm. and the process is stable, let's say, give them four. So mm -hmm. uh, our suitability will be 4.333 with this formula. Again, with the second example, when you think about template filling, automated uh, automated process it's uh, well a bit more complex let's give them three uh, mm -hmm. the volume can be also high let's give them the same uh, value and uh, it can be let's say a bit less stable than uh, the first case so we have another value Mm -hmm. And by volume, you mean amount of data we base this process on, uh, automation on, right? So that it has a lot of information to, to uh, automate that process, right? Yes, the volume is about the, the amount of data to be processed in a whole process. The, the whole process um, may be understood as a, a sequence of steps mm -hmm. um, and uh, it consists of iterations. So when you process a, a mm -hmm. record by record, this is, a, let's say this is an iteration and a, a number of fields within the record uh, processed is the 
let's say, number of steps. So mm -hmm. yes, volume is about the amount of data. So more data, the more data you have to process, the better um, candidate uh, for automation it, it actually is. Okay, okay, got it. And on the other hand, we need to think about uh, how beneficial the process is. So when you think about the benefit, you need to take into account how complex the process is. So how much time would that take to implement, to automate the process, to program the robot, to teach the robot to, to handle the process? So mm -hmm. let's yeah. say we have a uh, we have a cost of 10 units. I'm not referring to any currency here, but just uh, just a value. Um, and um, the, the more savings uh, we expect to have once the process is automated, the better. So let's say just uh, as an example that uh, the savings here will be, I don't know, 30. So the benefit for this is just a um savings minus costs mm -hmm. exactly the same um case uh, as the template filling process that we have here is a bit more complex it will take more time to implement it uh, mm -hmm. to automate it and the savings let's say they are equally good which means the benefit over time is 10 um, what we can see here, it's not important what are the units. It's important mm -hmm. to use the same scale for all the processes to be able to compare them. So when you now put your values calculated this way, as in this example, uh, in the chart, when one ax is, uh, axis, um, a vertical one is for how beneficial the automation can be and on the horizontal axis you can see how suitable uh, the process is so here we have uh, suitability and here mm -hmm. we have uh, how beneficial they are you can see that the first process can be a really better candidate mm -hmm. from the from the model we have built here than the template feeling generally um, you can say the more in green, the better mm -hmm. candidate the process is. Okay, so even if we compare, for example, three processes and they they all are near this yellow line, it means actually that none of them is the good choice for automation, right? Yes, the, it can be a case that you have a, a number of processes and the most of them are uh, concentrated in, let's say, uh, yellow or, or red uh, area. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean, actually, that there is no good candidate. It mm -hmm. means that the more the process is moved to the uh, upper right corner, the better candidate it is. If you compare the processes to each other, it means that uh, you can still select the best candidate, but the question is, is this really a good candidate? So what mm -hmm. are the costs? What is the potential benefit? And how much time and how much money would that take to have this process automated? So these questions are always important when you decide whether to select a process for automation uh, or not. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the greener, the more appropriate, Correct. but still you need to decide what's the best in your organization if they are closer to the yellow line. Correct. Okay. Thanks. There is one more very interesting application that you can use RPA. This is uh, an ability to use automation or uh, a robot to handle very old legacy software your organization is using. Uh, and for example, uh, an old HRM or CRM application that was built in late 80s uh, mm -hmm. with a very ancient technology, but still the application is in use and it contains a lot of very valuable data. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, that not um, enough people at the market that are 
capable of doing anything with the application. There is no API implemented. We don't even have a source code for the application. So what to do with such an old system that that's the case. We, we, we have no other way to use the system than using its uh, user interface. So mm -hmm. let's say a traditional way of doing the software it was it was um, uh, created for. So I will show you a, um, a slide that will uh, explain briefly what I'm talking about. So let's think that we have a, an old even terminal system built in, in 80s and uh, what we can do as uh, people, we can use a keyboard and mouse to uh, mm -hmm. to use it. On the other hand, it's obvious that we would like to see uh, the data and use the, the newer systems better integrated with everything um, that um, uh, we currently uh, have um, on the market, like new CRM system built with the proper uh, modern technology and how to get the data from the old system to the new one. So mm -hmm. this is, let's say, an ideal case for, for this kind of automation because uh, a robot can mimic um, a person that is using keyboard and the mouse. Ah, for all the technical systems, there, were, there was no mouse, mouse sub, uh, support, so that's not the case. But yes, you still can use a keyboard. So, uh, so what you can do, you can teach a robot mm -hmm. to use the keyboard to walk through all the records in the old system, read the screen content, and put the data into a new CRM. So that's a very good case when you don't have any other technical, um, let's say, solution to access the data. So as I said, you have no access to data to the database to read the data uh, with the SQL, for example. Uh, the only way is to use a human, um, a, let's say a person, a physical uh, a person to use UI to read the data and to mm -hmm. uh, to type into new, to put into new um, uh, solutions. Um, it can be really, uh, let's say, uh, a painkiller. <laughs> The, for, for for this kind of um, problems. That sounds great. Uh, I believe it would be just one time um, automation, then they wouldn't have to repeat that. So thanks again. And to sum up for our uh, listeners, uh, if you want to choose the most appropriate process to automate it, you need to remember about uh, two dimensions. First one is to have this beneficial, so compare costs to savings and to have it suitable. Uh, the second dimension suitability and on this dimension you need to remember about uh, having uh, this process with high volume so so based on big amount of data stable and simple and this is basically the summary of appropriateness of the process um vitek would you like to add something at this uh, stage yes i think that the most important part of of, of all the journey uh, um, automation journey uh, for the organization is to really carefully select the proper processes, suitable processes for the automation. Uh, it's very important to understand the consequences uh, from both perspectives, ethical and practical. Um, and well, to be prepared to justify it from the business and economic perspective. So what are the costs? What are potential benefits? Mm -hmm. uh, and value is not only just in money when you think about automation. Mm -hmm. uh, so to select proper processes uh, and be aware of, of this suitability factor, regardless of how the organizations will build the, the suitability model mm -hmm. uh, is important. And this is um, an activity that needs to be done carefully.
this is a really uh, responsible task. Uh, you need to remember that you can select a process that is potentially very beneficial. On the other hand, it will become very, very complex to be implemented. So from this perspective, it, it may happen that at the end, it will not be the best uh, candidate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I hope it will be helpful for everyone interested in automating uh, their processes. So thank you again, Vitek, for that interview, for that lesson, and uh, have a nice day. Thank you. Have a nice day.